How you guys doing officials around the world? It's me, your boy, Mr. Smooth, here to break down some more video. For today's video, we're going to be focusing on rough play, management, upgrades, and also positioning all in the same video. Again, our officials, we're going to be focusing in on, yes, that's right, we're putting Lily and Solomon under the microscope. They were officiating the Mongolian adult league so with that said let's see and let's break down their play and let's see what happened i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna move these graphics up out of the way so you guys can see the game but with that said let's go ahead and start the video i'm gonna play the whole play in its entirety Okay, so it appears that Solomon and Lily, they called it an intentional foul after all that happened, but we're going to go ahead and break it down. But before I do that, let me know what you guys think of the play. Was it an intentional foul or not? And we're also going to focus in on positioning and the free throw and what happened after the rebound of that free throw. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and rewind it and we're going to see how we could officiate this play a little bit better. So right now we're going to have free throws being attempted. So if we look at the positioning of our trail, we notice that he is at this point out of position. If he's able to walk down and stand somewhere in this area, he'll be able to see his responsibilities for his, his responsibilities for the free throw shooters because he has to shoot it from, from this view. He has to look through the backs of these two players right here just to get a look at the shooter's feet. But he also has the first two players in these spots right here as well as the middle player on the far side. So if he would step down right here, that would give him the best view to see everything. But of course, unfortunately, he's too high. And since he's out of position and too high, he's going to miss this as well. So we have a shot in the rebound. Now we're going to have players fighting for rebounds. So we can see that our trail is actually moving back. So he's taking himself out of the play. But if he had remained in this area right here, he would have a great look at the rebounding action. Now we have a rebound. We can see that our trail takes another step. Step back. Now, in this position, you don't want to bail out too quickly. You want to maintain your open look right here. Then as the play releases and starts to advance into the front court, then you're going to want to sprint back to the end line. 
So now we have a rebound. We actually have immediate ball pressure. Now, if our trail official, who is now moving all the way back, it appears to the half court, if he would just held right here on this on this spot, he'll be able to help out the old lead or the new trail in this situation with any on ball with all the on ball pressure. Now we're going to have a pivot. We can see right now that. We can see right now that our trail official Lily right here is stacked as she's looking through the back of the defender so she can't tell if the if this defender's being pushed or if this player right here who's trying to get the jump ball at the moment is he hitting them on the R. So our new lead Solomon, if he would have held this position, he would actually have the best view to see this play. So as we continue the row to play, we have what appears to be a hard pivot, and we have the offensive player knocking the defender to the ground. Now, this should have been a foul call. As you can see, this was an obvious foul. We heard the crowd. They ooed and they odd at the fact that this player was able to load up and throw his and thrust his upper body into the defender, knocking that defender to the ground. Unfortunately, our trail was straight line. Now she could have assumed that this was a foul. Maybe she thought the defender was flopping, but after looking at the replay, I would support a foul being called in this situation. So that's the oohs and the odds by the crowd. I gotta tell you something was clear and obvious wasn't called so now we're going to go in transition and we're going to have black number four slide in and commit a foul now we have one of our officials saying the players need to calm down but there's also something the officials can do to calm down the game and that's game management we can do that one by blowing whistles on fouls that are clear and obvious or in this situation when something has gone to a point where the game is about to blow up. In this situation, Lily did a good job of using her voice telling the players to calm down. So now we have a foul called by Solomon. And it looks like he wants to potentially upgrade this foul call to an intentional. So he's going to talk to his partner. So as they're discussing the play right now, they're going over all their options. Should we upgrade this to an intentional? Is it a common foul? Who's going to shoot two shots? What are we going to tell the players and everything like that? But before we actually get into the possible upgrade, what you want to do is you want to Make sure you may, you may want to put players on their benches so they're away from, from each other. So there's no trash talking, no back and forth. We don't want no scuffles or fights to break out. So you want to send both players to their bench, possibly depending on how long your conversation is going to be. Then you're going to do your conversation. This is a good spot to do it away from the players, away from the table so nobody can hear you. Our officials discussing the play. As you can see, the blue number four, he got a little bit too close, so now they're going to shoo that player away again. But again, if you tell both teams to go to their team area, you don't have to worry about this problem. <laughs> So now when you report 
the foul to the table. You want to make sure you're loud with your voice and your mechanics because you want the players and everybody to know what you have called. If I were to replay this again, it's very hard. The here. Um, So again, you want to use your voice. Black number four, intentional foul for excessive contact. Red is going to shoot two shots and get the ball at the point of interruption. So let's see if that happens. I'll fast forward the free throws a little bit. Now we're going to resume play. And now we have our second play. Let's see if I can go back to it. There we go. So now we're going to have our second problem. Now we gotta, we got to be aware of where we have our throw-in spots. I believe the foul happened somewhere around the half court somewhere in this area so you actually want to take the ball out parallel so we should be taking the ball out a little bit closer to the division line so that's something else you want to remember you always after the intention of foul go to the point of interruption and you're going to have to throw in at the perfect at the correct spot so with that said this was a quick a quick breakdown again let me know if you felt that the second foul led to an intentional foul. Let me know your thoughts on the first foul. Do you think the defender flopped? Do you think it was an offensive foul? Or would you maybe have upgraded that first foul to an intentional foul as well? It's me, again, your boy, Mr. Smooth from TaylorMade Officials. Hit the like button. Also, subscribe if you're new to the channel. With that said, peace.